Welcome to Edwards Clinical Education. And in this simulation, we were looking at the application of Acumen Hypertension Prediction Index software, specifically looking at vasopressor therapy. My name is Simon Davis, and I'm a consultant anesthetist at York Teaching Hospitals. Our patient being simulated today is a 69 year old male who is approximately 90 kilograms. He's undergoing emergency open laparotomy for a perforated diverticulum with presumed fecal peritonitis. Our patient today has a past medical history of ischemic heart disease and controlled hypertension, and prior to surgery was taking a tenlol, aspirin, and isosorbite mononitrate. We join our simulation approximately 20 minutes following induction of anesthesia. And before we start a simulation, uh, we'll just orientate ourselves to what we see on the screen before us. In the background, we have our basic patient monitor with our continuous ECG in the top, uh, currently at 70 beats per minute. In the middle, we have our invasive blood pressure taken from a radial arterial line, showing our systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressures. And at the bottom, the blue line is our pulse oximeter, showing our saturations. The monitor in the foreground is our advanced hemisphere monitor with the Acumen software. The trending line at the top is our hypertension prediction index that we'll talk about shortly. And then we have our mean arterial pressure, our stroke volume, and our stroke volume variation, which is a measure of being preload responsive. The dials at the bottom of the monitor show our cardiac output, a DPDT, which is a surrogate for contractility, EA dyne, and our systemic vascular resistance. As we start our simulation, it's important to know this is run at one and a half times speed in order to make the information succinct. Our baseline values, we can see the heart rate here is 70 beats per minute in this gentleman with a mean arterial pressure of 82 millimeters of mercury. Our hypotension prediction index is 35. Remember, our hypotension prediction index uh, tells us the likelihood of an event occurring in the future, and that event is hypotension, and we define that as being less than 65 millimeters of mercury for greater than one minute. Looking at other parameters, our stroke volume is adequate at 74 mils per beat, and our stroke volume variation is slightly raised, suggesting this individual may be a preload responder. By preload responder, we mean that giving fluid will increase this individual's stroke volume. We can see already early on in the simulation that HPI is starting to increase, suggesting there are changes in the underlying cardiovascular physiology. Remember, HPI is the patient's likelihood of trending towards a hypertensive event, and that event is defined as a mean arterial pressure of less than 65 millimeters of mercury for greater than one minute. HPI alarms above 85, and we'll get some visual recognition of that to allow us to be alert to the fact that hypertension is likely to occur moving forward. The displayed alert allows us to go to more information, which we call the secondary screen, where we can interrogate the underlying physiology. Remember, we do not treat HPI as a number. We treat the underlying physiology that is leading towards hypertension. If we look at our preload direction, the SVV is raised at 19%, suggesting this individual is a preload responder. However, EA dyne, a measure of being a pressure responder, is below the threshold where giving fluid will increase blood pressure. It's also important to know that DPDT, the surrogate for contractility, has not changed over the last five minutes. So the deranged physiology that we're seeing at the moment is a raised SVV, SVV although giving fluid will increase flow, because EA dyne is low, that will not increase blood pressure. We can see that SVR is also starting to decrease, currently down by 15% over the last five minutes. So this is the situation we are now faced with. We have our HPI that is telling us that hypertension is likely moving forward in the future. We are trending towards hypertension in terms of our mean arterial pressure. Our stroke volume remains stable. And whilst our SVV is raised, suggesting this individual will benefit from fluid in terms of improving flow, we know from the low EA dyne that giving fluid, whilst it will increase stroke volume, will not increase mean arterial pressure. Contractility in this patient remains unchanged, and we can see that our SVR has decreased from our 1200 baseline. So, giving fluids will not improve blood pressure. Contractility remains unchanged throughout the simulation, 
And therefore, by default, which is reinforced by our dropping SVR, this is a problem of vasoplegia. This patient has a problem with their systemic vascular resistance, and hence the correct treatment in this case would be a vasopressor. It is also perfectly reasonable to give fluid to this individual to improve their flow because they are preload responsive due to the raised SVV. But we must be mindful that that will not solve the blood pressure issue because EA dyne is below the critical value. So whilst fluid may be the appropriate treatment to improve flow, in order to improve blood pressure, the underlying physiology suggests this is one of vasoplegia and therefore a vasopressor is the correct intervention. HPI has now been raised for approximately four minutes. And we can see now we're only just becoming hypotensive, giving us that prediction of impending hypotensive events. We have now given a bolus of a vasoconstrictor in order to rectify our mean arterial pressure and our hypotensive event. Once we've given the vasopressor, denoted by the green arrow that you see on the screen there, we see almost instantaneous changes both in HPI and also on mean arterial pressure. HPI drops at a relatively rapid rate as the underlying physiology, the vasoplegia is corrected by the vasopressor. I want to see this drop down to normalized values now, for example, 38 that we see there. Blood pressure will also start to increase. The mean arterial pressure has gone up from 64 to 68. And we'll see that continue to increase as time passes. It's important to also notice that by giving a vasopressor, we have not changed EA dyne. And that's because EA dyne is not a measure of systemic vascular resistance. Afterload is part of a function that goes into EA dyne, but it is not a number that we trace with vasopressors. It does not reflect systemic vascular resistance. Approximately a minute post vasopressor, HPI is down to 24, a significant drop. Our mean arterial pressure has increased to 76, and stroke volume has dropped very slightly, which we expect with giving a vasopressor, but an increase in left ventricular end diastolic volume will soon start to increase that once again. SVV has normalized to below 12%. Contractuality once again remains unchanged, and our SVR has increased from around about 800 to more normalized 1200 values. So by looking at HPI, by being warned about impending hypertension, and by interrogating the secondary screen as to the correct cause of the impending hypertension, we can rationally choose the treatment that is appropriate for this patient. Identifying the cause of hypertension and appropriate titration of vasopressor therapy were both important considerations in this case. And HPI alarmed for roughly four minutes before mean arterial pressure fell below 65, effectively predicting hypertension. And the HPI secondary screen displays advanced parameters arranged by preload, contractility, and afterload to allow us to investigate and identify the root cause of impending hypertension.